Hello, my name is Peter Maloney, the Secretary of Newport Historical Society and a member of the Newport 300 Committee. Today I'd like to present you the people that lived in Main Street in Newport between 1855 and 1970. This presentation has been prepared for Heritage Week and is being supported by Mayo County Council. Community Heritage Grant Scheme of 2021 and the Heritage Council. I'd like to thank Mike Rashley for taking the photographs. Everything that's in this presentation will be available on the website newportmayo300.com forward slash genealogy. And if you, as we're going through it, if you'd like to pause on one of the slides down in the bottom left hand corner of the video, there's a little pause button that you can you can pause and, and stop and you can even reverse it if you want to go back that you've skipped over. Um, the sources for producing this family tree would be the Valuation Office cancellation books which itemise everybody that lives in each of the houses um, in the town uh, between the period of 1855 when it was first taken to uh, when they stopped recording it when the rates were abolished in the uh, 1970s. Um, we'll make a special um, concentration on the 1911 census, which gives details not only of the, the householder, but also the, the family, all the people that were living in the house at the time. Um, births, deaths and marriages uh, would be available on irishgenealogy.ie and we've been able to tie a lot of these uh, births, deaths and marriages into the people that were living in the houses in 1911 and we, we hope to produce a family tree for each of the houses in in town. Uh, to help with this we've subscribed to um, two pay sites Ancestry Co UK and FindMyPast.ie and also uh, we found information on uh, two free sites wikitree.com and familysearch.org and also if we found we want to find out more details about a particular person that might have lived in the house google.com has been uh, helpful on several occasions. So the family chief from Main Street is at uh, newportmayo300.com forward slash genealogy and then you click on the link for uh, Main Street. The project will be completed by Friday the 29th of October 2021 and more details will be in a book published by Newport 300 Committee, Newport 300, the first 200 years, 1720 <coughs> to 1920. Here's some um, photographs showing Main Street from the Wynn Collection in the National Library and also there's some photographs from the Orem Collection in uh, UCD Archives. You can see on the church there, this is St. Joseph's Church, the original church um, that was um, replaced by St. Patrick's Church in 1918 and then just down below it you can see a large two-story house which was the uh, hotel and this had to be demolished uh, when the railway was put in. Here's another picture of uh, the houses in Main Street up at the and another view of Main Street. This is from the back of Medlicott Street. And you can see uh, the road bridge going over and up, up through Main Street. And here you can see um, this is taken from the tower of the church and you can see um, the, the roofs of some of the houses on the um, same side of Main Street as the, as the church and then the, the fronts of the houses on the opposite side of the street and then uh, in amongst the trees is Newport House.
And this is a later photograph. Um, this was taken by Helen Hooker O'Malley and uh, shows um, a sheep fair in, uh, in Newport and Main Street. Okay, so in the 1911 census, the uh, numbers on the census don't correspond with the, the number of the houses on the valuation office records because the uh, census was taken in the order that the, the constables from the RIC uh, found the people at home. So the first house they'd call on would be house number one and then the next house would be house number two. And if you happen to be nobody in the house, then they'd come back and they wouldn't be in the order that you'd see walking down the street. So in house number one, uh, William Green, a baker and relieving officer, age 64. Patrick Geraghty, age 50, a shopkeeper. Bernard Keenan, age 26, was born in County Roscommon. He was a draper. Patrick Walsh, a merchant, he took over uh, Kerry's premises. He was t age 28 in 1911. Margaret Gavin, age 56, a shopkeeper. Peter McNulty, age 51, a publican. Alan Callaghan, age 36, a dressmaker. Proy O'Donnell, uh, age 44, he didn't give his occupation. He, he was born in Lorania and he was a, a well-known local historian. He wrote several articles for the uh, Western people in the Mayo News. Hugh Dever, a uh, um, merchant, aged 80. Francis Chambers, aged 41, a shopkeeper. Rebecca Moran, age 73, a publican and shopkeeper. Marianne O'Boyle, aged 85, a grocer and publican. Frank Chambers, age 37, a shopkeeper. Elizabeth Walsh, hardware and grocery. Patrick Kane, age 45, a publican and grocer. Mary Berry, age 35, a national school teacher. Anthony Heenahan, a farmer and shopkeeper, age 52. Catherine David, age 63, a shopkeeper. Jane Deverell, age 68, a hotel keeper. John Kelly Moran, age 37, who was born in England, was a clerk of Petty Sessions. Mary Barry, age 73, she gives no um, occupation, but she was a retired postmistress. Cicely McGovern, aged 88, a shoemaker. Bridget Davitt, aged 75, no occupation. Patrick Cusett, aged 63, a butcher. And here we see a picture of a map of Newport, and right in the middle of it is Mary. And this is a, a closer view of... Um, of Main Street, and this is on the corner of Castle Bar Street and um, Main Street, house number one, and the cancellation. Okay, and in 1855, uh, this house was lived in by Michael Walsh, 1878, Honor Walsh, 1879, William Walsh, 1880, Bridget Walsh, 1881, John Walsh. 1890, Hugh Dever, 1893, Mrs. Emerson, 1914, Francis Chambers, and 19... In 1911, Frank Chambers, aged 37, a shopkeeper, was living in the house with his wife, Sarah, aged 31. They'd been married for four years and had had one child, the daughter, Bridget, aged two. So we go around the corner into... Um, into Main Street, and here we see the um, Centre Supermarket, Sheridan Supermarket, houses two, three, and four. You can imagine that 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 um, there was three three houses in that um, as converted. So here we see who was living in house number two, 1855 Dominic King, 1859 William Walsh, 1866 John O'Donnell, 1869 John Chambers. 1870, Margaret Walsh. 1873, Michael Callaghan. 
1879, John Ryan. 1883, Patrick O'Donnell. 1885, Patrick McGarry. 1887, Richard O'Donnell. 1892, Mary Sweeney. 1893, Patrick Cusack. 1897, Michael Walsh. 1913, Eliza Walsh. 1947, Mary Walsh. And 1974, Michael House number three in 1855, John McNeely, 1861, Patrick Stanton, 1863, Hester Stanton, 1864, Daniel Kilroy, 1867, John Healy, 1869, Michael Kelly, 1877, Mary Kelly, 1879, John Kane, and house number four, 1855, John Owen Coyne, 1857, Margaret Gannon, 1861, Patrick Stanton, 1865, Patrick McManaman, 1867, Thomas McManaman, 1871, Daniel McManaman, 1872, Richard Walsh. Houses three and four are now combined and becomes a licensed house. In 1902, Eliza Walsh. 1947, Mary Walsh, and 1972. In 1911, Elizabeth Walsh, age 58, a widow and hardware and grocer. She'd been married for 27 years and had 13 children, nine of whom were still alive. Her sons, Patrick E., aged 39, uh, looked after the timber and hardware in the shop. Michael, age 37, looked after provisions. James B., age 35, John W., age 26, looked after the grocery, and daughter Mary, uh, age 24. House number five. In 1855, this is a hotel, offices, and yard and garden, and occupant is James Kane. In 1857, Patrick Van Manneman. The building is split in two in 1863. In 5A, Patrick McManaman. 1865, Charles Garvey. 1866, Patrick McManaman. 1867, Thomas Mulroy. 1874, Hugh Joyce. 1880, Margaret Malley. 1882, Patrick Malley. 1884, John Joyce. 1901, Mrs. Noonan. 1911, Patrick Kane. 1970. Patrick Kane, aged 45, lived in the house in 1911, a publican and grocer. His wife, Margaret, aged 35, they'd been married for 11 years and had four children. Three of them were still alive. The daughters, Mary, aged 10, Annie, aged 6, and Elizabeth. 5B. Martin Walsh was living in this part of the house in 1863, 1864 James Forrestal, 1867 Patrick McManaman, 1868 James Daly, 1882 Michael McManaman, 1882 James Berry, 1898 Mrs Berry, 1913 Annie Berry, 1938 Mary Berry, 1948 Mary Berry, a single national teacher, and her sister Annie, aged 32. Also boarding in the house was Bridget Burke, a 23-year-old national teacher born in County Tipper. House number six. Occupant of this house in 1855 was Richard Landers. 1890, Patrick Gorman. In 1892, the house was divided into 6A, 1892, Patrick Davitt. 1901, Catherine Davitt. 1938, Patrick Davitt. 1947, Michael Chambers. 1982, Patrick J. Chambers. 1986, Chambers. Catherine Davitt, age 63, a widow and shopkeeper, lived in the house in 1911. Her son is Patrick, age 30, a single farmer. Peter, age 27, a single car driver. Michael, age 24, a single car driver. Her daughter is Kathleen, age 21, and single. Marianne Marini, age 38, and a widow and her son, John William Mulroney, 
aged 18, an officer's servant. Also in the house was Catherine's daughter, Winifred McGee, aged 25, a dressmaker, and her husband, John Francis McGee, aged 26, her civilian. 6b. Patrick Malone lived there in 1892. 1901, Anthony Heenan. 1918, Martin Sweeney. 1956, Michael Sweeney. 1957, Michael Chambers. 1986, Mary Alice and James. Anthony Heenan, aged 52, a farmer and shopkeeper. He'd been married for 30 years and had six children, all of them were still alive. His daughters, Mary Ann, aged 24, and Martha, aged 24, both of whom were single. Also in the house was Bridget Jennings, aged 17. House number seven. eighteen fifty five John Ball eighteen fifty seven Richard Landris eighteen fifty eight David McAdams eighteen sixty Richard Landris eighteen sixty two Michael Lavelle eighteen sixty three William Ball eighteen seventy five Samuel Deverell nineteen twenty James Chambers nineteen twenty nine Patrick Eugene Walsh nineteen forty six Julia Walsh nineteen forty eight Miss Josephine Kelly, 1980, Dominic Chambers, 1995, and here we see a picture of uh, Derville's Hotel. So in 1911, Jane Derville, aged 68, a widowed hotel keeper, she'd been married for 43 years and had six children, four of whom were still alive. Her son, David Wilden Page Derville, aged 36, a victualler and his wife, Margaret Stoke O'Deverell, aged 24. They'd been married for, for five years and had two daughters, both of whom were still alive, Isabella Anderson Deverell, aged three, and Jane Syme Deverell, aged two. Also in the house was John Ferris, aged 16, a shop assistant, Mary Ann Curran, aged 16, a general domestic servant, and Delia Mallon, aged 16. House number eight. 1855 Patrick Gibbons, 1896 George Ferris, 1903 John Moore, 1911 John Kelly Moore, aged 37, single and a clerk of Petty Sessions. His two single aunts, Margaret Moore, aged 58, and Sarah Moore, aged 52. His cousin Bridget Cusack, aged 28, also single, and Mark Cusack, aged 27, and single, described as a servant. House number nine. 1855 David Bowl, 1860 John Staunton, 1862 Patrick Gibbons Jr., 1883 Margaret Moran, 1898 John Moran, 1949 Mrs. Bridget Moran, 1977 House 8 and 9 were combined and Frank Chambers occupied a house and office and Evelyn Dan House number 10. House number 10. In 1855, this house was occupied by Peter Gibbons. 1857 by James Clinton. 1860 by John Ginley. 1869 by Patrick Davin. 1894, Patrick Gibbons. 1896, George Ferris. 1897, Hugh Dever. 1921, Sarah J. Cusack. 1925, John Kilroy. 1964, Ezra McManaman, and 1977, John Geraghty. Hugh Dever, aged 80, a widower and merchant. His wife had had five children, three of them were still alive. His sons, Patrick A., aged 25, a commercial clerk, and Hubert, aged 23, a scholar. His daughter, Sarah J., aged 14, and Bertie O'Malley, aged 3, his, gr his grandson. Also in the house were three servants. Patrick Kane, aged 15, a shopman, Michael Dever, aged 15, a general servant, and Anne Geraghty, aged 14, a domestic. 1855, Patrick Peter Kane, 1863, Anthony David, 1868, James Costello, 1927, Mary E. Padden, 1947, Peter J. Padden,
1957, Jack Corbett. 1977, Jack Garrett. House number 30. 1855, John Feeney. 1873, Michael Callan. 1875, Sarah Callan. 1882, John Mahoney. 1888, Anne Lawn. 1890, John McManaman. 1897, Miss Berry. Miss Barry, sorry. 1916, Sarah Barry. 1925, Margaret J. Barry. 1949, Mrs. H. J. Walsh. And 1963, Michael Walsh. Mary Barry, aged 73, and a widow, lived in the house in 1911. Her daughter, M Maria Ellen Stack, aged 43, also a widow. Her daughters, Margaret Jane Barry, aged 37, single and postmistress. Fanny Elizabeth Barry, aged 31, single and a milliner and sales, and her son Richard John Barry, aged 29, who was also single. Also in the house were Mary Frances Stack, her granddaughter, aged 18 and single, and her grandson Richard Stack, aged 17, both post office assistants, and her granddaughter Honora Josephine Stack, aged 16. House number 14. This is the house on the left there. 1855, Sarah McGovern. 1860, Sabina and John McGovern. 1861, Sabina McGovern. 1868, Bridget Moran. 1890, Anne McGovern. 1914, Dominic McGovern. 1958, Peter J. Patton. 1962, Patricia Walsh. In 1911, Cicely McGovern, aged 88, and a widow. Her son, Dominic McGovern, aged 53, and a widower and shoemaker and postman. His two sons, Dominic Timothy, aged 15, and Patrick, aged 12. House number 15, the house is in Rome. 1855, Anthony Sweeney. 1865, Widow Sweeney. 1867, Anne Sweeney. 1868, Anthony David. 1882, Lawrence David. 1911, Bridget David. 1925, Peter David. 1930, Dominic McGovern. 1936, Peter David. 1950, it was vacant, and 1968, it was in ruins. In 1911, Bridget David, aged 75, and a widow, was living in the house. Her sons, John, aged 50, a single labourer. Peter, aged 44, a single priest's man. Lawrence, age 42, a single car owner, and her daughter, Mary, age 28. House number six. <coughs> in 1855, James Sweeney lived in this house. 1864, James Mangan. 1874, Anne Fitzgerald. 1882, Edward Fitzgerald. 1886, Anne Fitzgerald. 1898, John McManaman. 1911, Patrick Cusack. 1925, Cecilia Cusack. 1935, Patrick and Thomas Cusack. 1943, Patrick Cusack. 1955, Robert Loftus. 1958, the house was vacant, and in 1960, he was C. Patrick Cusack is living in the house in 1911. He was married in a butcher. His wife, Celia, was aged 50. They'd been married for 29 years and had nine children. Eight of them were still alive. Their daughter, Mary McCormick, aged 28, who'd been married for two years and had one child, Patrick Joseph McCormick, who was under one year old. Their sons, Mark Cusack, aged 26, a single rural postboy. Patrick, aged 23, a married rural postboy, whose wife had had one child who was no longer alive. Also their sons, Thomas, aged 20, a single butcher. Marty, aged 17, and their daughter, Sarah, aged 14. House number 17 and 18. In 1855, David Bowl. 1870, Margaret Bowl. 1875, Anthony Conway. 1888, Dominic McGovern. 1898, Licensed House Occupied by John McGovern. 1938, Alice McGovern. 
1940, Patricia J. Walsh. 1945, James Kelly. 1982, Robert and Antoinette Hanron. 1986, Michael Walsh. This building and house to the left of it is now hotel. In 1911, John McGovern, age 42, and a shopkeeper, his wife Alice Mary, age 32, and their children Shan O'Reilly, age 3, Eileen Teresa, age 2, and Dermot Thomas, age 1. Also in this house were his sister-in-law, Theresa Mary O'Reilly, aged 20, a single shop assistant, and Richard Henry, aged 26, a single lodger whose occupation was given as owner CDB. So this is what the, the street looked like in the, um, probably in the 30s. House number 19, 1855 Thomas Cannon, 1863 Austin Geraghty, 1872 John Healy, 1876 Widow McGarvin, 1882 Thomas Lavelle, 1886 Charles Murray, 1894 Patrick Malley, 1896 Bridget Harn, 1902 John McGarvin. 1906, Patrick Gray. <coughs> 1941, Josephine McGuire. 1946, Josephine Callahan. 1962, Frank Callahan. House number 20. 1855, William Forrestal. 1890, Paul Moran. 1894, Patrick Gray. 1941, Josephine McGuire. 1946, Josephine Callahan, 1962, Frank Callahan, and 1911. In 1911, Patrick Gray, age 68, an RIC pensioner, and his wife Lizzie, age 58, were living in the house. Their children, Lizzie Kate, age 24, a national teacher, Cecilia Francis, age 16, and Margaret M. Fitzpatrick, a single visitor, national teacher, age 22, were also living in the house. House number 21 in 1855, James Mankin. 1865, Peter Kane. 1868, Michael Kelly. 1870, John Chambers. 1874, Anne Fitzgerald. 1875, Bridget Fallon. 1878, Patrick McHale. 1882, Anthony McGarry. 1886, Anne Garvin. 1888, Michael O'Malley. 1901, Martin McGuire. 1907, Dominic Gavin. 1909, John Flynn. 1924, Kate Flynn. 1938, Patrick Goggins. 1947, Ezra McManaman. And 1967. Living in this house in 1911 was Katie Flynn age 26, a single dressmaker. House number 22 is in 1855, John Moore. 1860, Edward Mulcrone. 1861, John Healy. 1862, Hugh Higgins. 1865, Edward Muldoon. 1866, Patrick Griffin. 1868, Peter Kane. 1874, Michael Barrett. 1888, Patrick Malone. 1896, James Forrestal. 1915, Thomas McGovern. 1924, Dominic Gavin. And 1940. In 1911, Thomas McGovern, age 40, a relieving officer, and his wife Maria, age 25, and the daughter Elizabeth M., age 1. House number 24. 1855, Bridget McGovern. 1866, Thomas Lavelle. In 1890, the house was in ruins. In 1935, the ruins were combined and a house, shop, offices and yard occupied by Dominic Kelly was built. In 1996, James and Sean Kelly. House number 26. 1855, Thomas O'Boyle. 1877, Mary Ann O'Boyle. 1916, Thomas O'Boyle. 
1934 Elizabeth O'Boyle, 1949 Delia and Lily Staunton, 1955 The House Was a Licensed Premises Still Occupied by Delia and Lily Staunton, 1996 The Building Which Was Now a Shop and Restaurant Including 1 to 5 Church Lane Was Occupied by In 1911 Marianne O'Boyle, aged 85, a widowed grocer and publican, she did 10 children, 6 of whom were still alive. Her son Thomas O'Boyle, aged 53, a single shop man. Her daughter Lizzie, aged 33. Her grandson Thomas Francis O'Donnell, aged 23. And granddaughter Annie Theresa O'Donnell, aged 22. Also in the house were two servants, Patrick Kane, aged 20, and Kate Moran, aged 15. House number 27. 1855, the house was owned by Sir Richard O'Donnell. 1881, Patrick Moran. 1909, Mrs. Devine. 1916, Marion Devine. 1925, the building was a licensed premises occupied by Arthur Devine. 1959, Dominic Kilroy. 1964, Michael Kilroy. 1965. In 1911, Rebecca Moran, age 73, public and shopkeeper, lived in the house. Her daughter, Marion Devine, aged 49, who was married for 26 years and had three children, all of whom were still alive. Also in the house were her granddaughter, Sarah Devine, aged 23, and her grandson, Arthur Devine, aged 20, a shop assistant. House number 1855, Sir Richard O'Donnell. 1881, Edward Fitzgerald. 1910, Francis Chambers. 1943, Michael Chambers. 1986, Mary Alice and James Ross. Francis Chambers, aged 41, a shopkeeper, lived in the house in 1911 with his wife, Alice, aged 29, and son Francis Joseph, aged 2. Also in the house were Patrick Mary, aged 23, and Margaret Jane McManaman, aged 13, both. House number 30. 1855, Anne Fergus. 1865, Anne and Michael Kelly Fergus. 1868, Anne Fergus. 1869, Hugh Dever. 1916, Patrick J. Daly. 1917, Edward Joyce. 1927, John F. Chambers. 1936, as a licensed premises, still occupied by John F. Chambers. 1969, Mary Bridget Chambers. 1978, Patrick Hannon. 1980, Thomas Malloy. 1982, Valerie Chambers. 1987, Connor Norton. House number 1855, Dominic Nelson. 1857, William Mahoney. 1860, Francis McManaman. 1862, Neil McManaman. 1863, Patrick Moran, 1881, John Quinn, 1896, Pat O'Donnell, 1912, Julie O'Donnell, 1925, Patrick O'Donnell, 1942, Annie O'Donnell, 1986, Sean Kane. Porrie O'Donnell, age 44, an occupied patient given, lived in the house in 1911 with his wife Siobhan, age 42. They'd been married for 16 years. House number 32. 1855, John Quinn. 1863, Catherine Quinn. 1877, Frederick Quinn. 1890, Mar Martin Carey. 1913, Pat Walsh. 1959, Frank M. Smith. 1960, Owen Mullins. 1977, Jack Corbett. House number 33. 1855, John Staunton. 1860, Hugh Higgins. 1868, Cecilia M. Higgins. 1872, William Mahoney. 1902, Tady Berry. 1942, Annie Callahan. 1951, Mrs. Annie Sweeney. 1953, James Callahan. 1954, Mrs. Annie O'Donnell. 1978, 
In 1911, Alan Callahan, aged 36, a single dressmaker, and her sister Nora, aged 34, also single, and a single boarder, Alan, Alan McManaman. House number 34. <coughs> 1855, Michael Brennan. 1860, William Mahoney. 1871, Henry Mahoney. 1896, Joseph Mahoney. 1897, Michael McHale. 1898, Anthony Conway. 1908, a licensed premises occupied by Peter McNulty. And 1948, Peter McNulty, aged 51, a publican, lived in the house in 1911 with his wife Margaret, aged 40. They had been married for 14 years and had nine children, seven of them who were still alive. Their sons were John Patrick, aged 13, Stephen, aged 11, Christopher Thomas, aged 9, and Francis Peter, aged 7, and their daughters Mary Ellen Gertrude, aged 12, Margaret Josephine, aged 5, and Celia Annie, aged 3. All the children, except Celia, House number 30. 1855, Dominic Gavin. 1893, Margaret Gavin. 1956, Charles Gavin. 1982, William Brennan Chambers. 19 in 1911, Margaret Gavin, aged 56, a shopkeeper and a widow who'd had eight children lived in the house. With her daughters Margaret Gavin, aged 30, and Mary Gavin, aged 29, a shop assistant, and her sons Dominic, aged 23, a shop assistant, and Michael, aged 21, a farmer. Manus McHugh, a 16 year old servant, all houses. 1855. House number 36. In 1855, Martin Carey lived there. In 1913, Patrick Walsh. 1917, Elisa's premises by Pat Walsh. Number 37, Peter Quinn. 1860, Martin Carey. 1862, James Cannon. 1864, Michael Greeley. 1870, Incorporated into Black. So this is the famous Carey Welsh building, the set up by Martin Carey and uh, continued on by his um, Patrick Walsh. Patrick Walsh in 1911 was living there, um, aged 28, a merchant, his wife Bridget, aged 27. They'd been married for four years and had two daughters, both of them were still alive, Mary, aged two and a half, and Bridget, aged six months. Also living in the house were Katie Donnellan, aged 20, and Annie Patrick, aged 18, two single milliners. There were four single shop assistants, John Herity, aged 19, Patrick Doher, aged 20, Michael Ryan, aged 17, Thomas Malley, aged 18, and Anthony Ryan, aged 27. There were also two single domestic servants, Nora Clark, aged 19, and Mary McCann, aged 16, and a nurse, Delia O'Donnell. In 1855, Hugh Higgins lived in this house. 1860, Michael Brennan. 1863, Patrick Carey. 1902, licensed premises occupied by Alice O'Malley. 1911, by E and Company Comer. 1916, by Bernard Keenan. 1937, by Michael Kelly. And 1987, Cyril Moore, who ran a chip. In 1911, Bernard Keenan, aged 26, a draper, and his wife Ellie, aged 27. Two female servants, Jenny O'Sullivan, aged 25, a dressmaker and Bridget McManaman is House number 3 1860 Patrick Moran 1902 Licensed Premises Occupied by Mary Lavelle 1912 Patrick Garrity 1925 Anne Garrity 1926 Patrick Lyons 1930 Timothy Lyons These were two, both brothers of Ned Lyons who so with the statues in Medlicott Street that was killed in the War of Independence. Um, 1934, William O'Malley. 1980, Valerie McGrawley. 1987, Kyo's, the Kitty Wake. And 1980. Living in the house in um, 1911 was Patrick Garrity, aged 50, a shopkeeper. 
His wife, Anne Garrity, aged 46, they'd been married for 32 years but had no children. Their nephew, Joseph Gibbons, aged 8, and a larger Mary Laval, aged 73. House number 39, incorporated into the Bridge Inn. 1855, Patrick Quinn. 1857, John Feehan. 1865, William Walsh. 1875, William Green. 1919, Margaret Green. 1933, Elizabeth Bracken. 1980, John Joe Munkrow. William Green, aged 64, lived in the house in 1911, a baker and relieving officer. His wife, Margaret Green, aged 67. Their son, Michael, aged 36, a single baker. Their daughter, Therese, aged 19, also single. And their granddaughter, Margaret. The family tree for Castlebar sorry, for Main Street, um, is at Newport Mayo, 300 of dot com forward genealogy and then you click on the link for Main Street. The project will be completed by Friday the 29th of October 2021 and more details are in the book published by Newport 300 Committee, Newport 300, the first 200 years 1720 to 1920 which should be published uh, shortly before Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and, and if you have you might be uh, interested in purchasing the book and finding out more about the, t the town of Newport in this time period.